Hey everybody, Jacklist Painting here with a new tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to use chipping medium on your minis to create a really cool weathering effect. We've got our Vallejo chipping medium right here, 76.550 and this really cool grat tank from maxmini.eu, super cool little shop that sells resin models. Figured this would be a perfect model to do this tutorial on. I'm going to start off by priming the model as per usual. I'm just using our Steinol Res Black Primer here to get a nice clean primer coat on this resin model. I like to start off with a few thin passes of primer, let that dry, and then come back with a heavier pass so that primer has a really good coat on the resin mini. After that, we're going to start off with some metallics to show the bare metal chassis of this tank. I've got some Army Painter Gun Metal to start off. It's a really nice kind of neutral, darkish steel color. We're going to base coat the entire model in the gun metal and go from there. After that, we're going to give it a slight highlight with some plate mail metal, also from Army Painter. This is going to be a little shinier to give us that kind of freshly scratched steel color. And I'm going to hold the airbrush a little farther away from the model and at sort of a high angle so that the deepest details on this tank maintain their darker gunmetal, giving us kind of a fake shadow on these metallics. After that, I'm going to take some Rust Monster from the Army Painter D&D line, thin that out in the airbrush, and we're going to sort of randomly splotch some of that rusty orange color onto our metallics in different areas, giving it sort of a random pattern. We want this rust to seem natural, you know, rust, um, it's not a uniform thing, you know, it just kind of happens where it happens. And, uh, builds up where the paint is chipped off so this way when we chip that paint off we have some rusty metal underneath helping the weathering look be more realistic and before we apply our chipping medium it's really important that you apply a varnish to your model this protects the paint that we just laid down from getting reactivated when we activate the chipping medium later on I'm using a matte varnish here you don't have to use matte you can use a satin or even a gloss even though the gloss varnish is going to be a little bit tricky so I recommend either a matte or satin varnish okay now that our matte varnish is dry we're gonna pull out the chipping medium I'm gonna put that in the airbrush it can be sprayed by itself but I have found that adding just a small amount of flow improver with it in the airbrush does not take away from the effect it still works just fine and it lets us spray it a bit easier the chipping medium is going to come out and it's going to sputter a little bit, but don't worry, when you spray it onto the model, it will self-level and it'll come out really smooth. You just have to spray it on, get everywhere you want the paint to be chipped. In this case, I'm just spraying it over the whole model because it's an orc vehicle, it's going to be heavily chipped. And this is real big importance right here. Once you spray the chipping medium on the model, let it sit for minimum 30 minutes. Um, 30 minutes to an hour is what I generally give the minis uh, when I do it so that way the chipping medium has enough time to dry and set because we want to spray paint over top of the chipping medium so you have to make sure that it's nice and dry and set up before you do this so minimum 30 minutes all right so we've let it set it's been about 45 minutes to an hour and I can touch the model, it's dry to the touch, I'm not getting any residue on my fingers or anything, I know that it's ready to go, passing the finger test. And now we're gonna pull out our Angel Green from Army Painter. This is gonna be the base color for our sort of Army Green Grot Revolution color that we're putting on this tank. And I'm just going to solidly base coat that color over the entire mini so that you can't see any of the metallic. All 
Alrighty, now that our base coat is down, I'm going to be hitting it with some army green, which is our sort of olive drab color that we're going to be using to create that army green tank color. And just like the shinier metal, I'm going to be holding the airbrush a little farther away at sort of a high angle so that as I spray this color, our shadows and deepest details on the model maintain that slightly darker green color to give us a little bit of contrast with our details. While I'm spraying this, I want to take a second to talk about a lot of the optional things you can do with chipping medium. In this case, our undercoat is metallic. Uh, it doesn't have to be a metallic. That's an entirely optional thing. You can go with browns. You can go with rusty colors, oranges and reds and browns to kind of create that mottled rust effect. You can even do it with other colors. Like say you only want the paint to chip off and show like a primer coat on your vehicles. You can do that as well. The final step that I'm doing before we chip the paint is just a slight dry brush of the same army green to kind of pick out those details because once you chip whatever color this is, it's really difficult to go back and highlight all of those things, especially edge highlights. So what I like to do when I paint vehicles is give them a slight dry brush to pick out all those details and then we'll chip that color. Again, an optional step is to also paint all of the secondary and tertiary colors on your tank like uh, the fuel cans and other weapons and things like this. You can paint those and then chip it all at once, but I'm just showing you how the chipping medium works in this vehicle. So uh, we're only doing the one color. All right, so now we're ready to chip our paint. I've got some clean water in a little dish right here. I've picked out kind of a crappy old brush and a old toothbrush, and these are gonna be our tools for chipping. You can do lots of different things. You can use toothpicks and little you know whatever you want to use to to chip that paint off and the basic of this is that you just dab some clean water onto an area and that will soak through the upper paint layer and reactivate the chipping medium causing that paint layer to kind of float and then you take your tools and you gently kind of dab at it and scratch at it and rub at the paint and it creates our very random realistic paint chipping effect you can see that I'm using the toothbrush in different motions. I'm kind of stabbing at it using the bristles. I'm also pulling back and forth using the toothbrush in that method to create different shapes. I'm using the uh, soft wooden tip of the painting handle on our brush to uh, go along edges and strip that paint as well. Some things to note about this too is that the more you work at it, the more aggressive that paint is going to chip off. So if you want a very subtle paint chipping, try to use very small tools and be very gentle and work at it to create those small effects. Again, this is an orc vehicle, so we're just kind of going ham to show you the effects of what you can do with the chipping medium. So I'm putting lots and lots of water over broad areas on the model. I'm using a big tool like our toothbrush and I'm being pretty aggressive. You can see again that I'm kind of pulling at it, I'm stabbing at it, um, all sorts of different motions to get that paint to kind of chip off in big swaths and create those really awesome dynamic paint chips that you normally want on a really weathered orc vehicle. But say if you're doing something like a space marine vehicle or a Tau suit or an Eldar grav tank and you want that paint chipping to be a little bit more subtle, you can come in with a much smaller tool such as a, a soft wooden toothpick and create very small chipping just along leading edges and things like that. So we're almost done chipping on this tank. You can see that our chipping medium is doing its job really nicely. The paint on this tank is getting real tore up and we're getting a really nice weathered look on this tank. It's important to note that you want to let all this dry, let all that paint dry and let that chipping medium settle down and set up again. And before you do anything else in the model, you want to hit it with another coat of varnish to seal all of that in or every time you touch the model with some wet paint, it's going to reactivate the chipping medium. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you next time.